Hi, hello, and welcome. Today I'll be doing my February 2023 wrap up video. And in these wrap up videos, I will sort of just talk and ramble on about um, all sorts of things related to my tarot and spiritual practice in general. So I hope you'll stick around and I'll leave some timestamps down below so that you can skip over to any of the topics that you might find interesting. So yeah, um, I do realize that this video for February is a bit late and um, that's just because I had a pretty crappy February in general. Um, I guess I don't want to really get into the specifics of it, but it was just a lot of people that I've encountered um, in February have been giving me lots of bad vibes and um, it's certainly put a damper on my mood. So yeah, I guess that was just February and that's past. It's March now, so hopefully things will be better. Anyways, for February, I didn't set too many goals for myself just because it's a shorter month. So I've just been continuing with the Celtic Tree Oracle um, and also my Tarot Journal slash Grimoire. For the Celtic Tree Oracle, I finished reading up on the remainder of the card meanings and I especially enjoyed finding correspondences and um, associations with tarot cards. So one of the examples of this would be the Reed card, um, which I, if I can find it, I think it was somewhere... Yeah, so I don't know if you can see this clearly, but anyways, the Reed card is talking about conviction, um, determination, having direction and focus, and this really makes me think of the Eight of Wands in Tarot. And also um, another card was, yes, I believe, yes, the Elder card. So this one um, is about the um, life, death, birth, and rebirth. And this card just really gives me a Ten of Swords vibe. So I thought that you know, finding these correspondences was really interesting. Also, a portion of these cards have associations with the different times of the year, and I'm thinking of incorporating them into my practice. I really like systems that have a time element to it because sometimes I just find it hard to maintain a regular practice, and having that time element makes it so much easier for me to have something to um, just think about and reflect on regularly. So I believe there are 13 of these cards, so they correspond almost monthly. Alright, so next up is my tarot journal slash grimoire, and I have completed the swords this month, yay! <laughs> so yeah, here we go. Um, oh, that's the pentacles, pentacles. Yeah, so I've, oops, let me see if I can get this to focus properly. I hope that's better. Um, anyways, so yeah, I've completed all my swords cards, but I did find one problem, and that is when I get to the court cards, I just realized that um, when I did these a long, long time ago, um, I didn't realize that there's another layer of elemental correspondences for the court cards. So for example, the Page of Swords, it's actually earth and air, and not just air, and I want to include this. So I could just use whiteout, but um, I want to see if there are more elegant solutions to this first. But anyways, um, yeah, it's more or less done. and. This month, I will have to start working on my cups. Okay, so, Kickstarters. Oh my goodness. This year, there seem to be just so many good ones out there, and I have a limited budget. Um, most recently, I backed the Rain Shadow Tarot by Claire Mack, 
and to be honest, I am normally not a collage deck person, but her art is really just something else. She has two oracle decks with a similar style that I've been eyeing for the longest time, and so when it was announced that she's releasing a tarot deck, I knew I just had to back it. There are two others that I'm planning on backing when they do open, and one is the Maria Tarot by Masha. Uh, she launched a Kickstarter last year, but unfortunately it didn't reach its goal. And she did say that um, it will be relaunched this year, so I'm saving a part of my budget for that. The other one is A Deck for Wonder Walking by Amy T. Wan. Um, I'm not sure if it's still going to be called that this time, but she did announce it in her most recent newsletter that she will be having a new Kickstarter for the deck. And by the way, her newsletter is such a delight. It's not very frequent, but every time there is one, it just exudes such magical vibes. Anyways, I'll have links to everything mentioned down in the description below. The last topic that I wanted to talk about today in my wrap-up video is about the I Ching. I finally started studying this and it's been wonderful connecting to something from my own heritage and ethnicity. Apart from its divination aspect, there is just so much wisdom and philosophies of life that I'm finding through this study process. And I'm only on the fifth line of the first hexagram. But then again, I guess the first two hexagrams are the most fundamental of the 64 hexagrams. Um, I've been learning through a Taiwanese professor's YouTube channel, Fu Pei Rong. I highly, highly recommend it if you can understand Mandarin or read Chinese. I also ended up getting the I Ching Oracle by Klaus Holitzka and Marley's Holitzka. So let's open this up. sure anyone who's been looking for an I Ching deck would have probably come across this at some point already, um, but I am a sucker for decks that come with a proper guidebook, plus the artwork on this deck is beautiful, and I am surprised that it came with a bag for the deck. Um, yeah, let's open these cards. So these are the bags. Let's see if I can show this better. It's a very simple sort of design. But um, yeah, the artwork on this deck is just beautiful. Um, although I would personally prefer if some of the hexagrams could be more in proportion, so like I would have liked this one for example to be in more of a proportion like this card or or this card, but um, anyways that is just my personal preference and um, it doesn't bother me too much, so um, I can't wait to be digging into this deck very soon. I also made these tiles that I'm hoping to use to help me memorize the 64 hexagrams. So on one side is the hexagram and on the other side is the name of the hexagram. And I used a similar method back in the days to remember um, Japanese letters where I wrote the letter on one side and the pronunciation on the opposite side. Um, 
I don't know if I'll have the same kind of dedication this time around, but um, we'll see if this works out. And so that is it for my February wrap up. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day or night wherever you may be watching this from. Bye for now.